Welcome to this tutorial on infinite series. In this tutorial we're going to talk about what a series is, convergence and divergence of series, how to test whether or not a series is convergent, and we'll be looking at several examples. When we talk about an infinite series of numbers, we're talking about adding numbers together. So the idea is we have an infinite list of numbers, which we call terms, and we start by adding the first and second terms, and then we add the third term, and then we add the fourth term, and so on, going on forever. And when we add together infinitely many numbers, it is actually possible to get something which is finite, and in that case we say we have a convergent series. On the other hand, we might get something which is infinite, and in that case we say we have a divergent series. So let's start off by making sure we're clear about the difference between the sequence and the series. In a sequence we have an infinite list of terms or numbers, separated by commas, and that's basically all there is to it. It's just an ordered list of numbers. In a series we also have infinitely many terms, but this time the terms are added together, so essentially the difference is that we now have plus signs instead of commas, so it's important not to get confused between sequences and series. We usually use this notation for a series, the capital sigma notation, which represents a summation. So this simply means that we refer to the terms in our series as a1, a2, a3, and so on. So in this particular example, a1 is the first term in our series, which is 1, a2 is the second term, which is a half, and so on. And you can see that we do have a pattern in this series. The pattern is that each term from the second term onwards is half of the previous term. So the general rule for the terms in our series is a n equals 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1 for all natural numbers n. So even though sequences and series are different things, and it's important not to confuse them, there is a way that we can represent a series using a sequence, and we do this by using what's known as a sequence of partial sums. Suppose we define Sn to be the sum of the first n terms in our series. So instead of adding together all the terms, we only add together the first n terms, and after that we stop. So that's why it's called a partial sum. So that means S1 would just be A1, which in our example is equal to 1, S2 would be A1 plus A2, which in our example is 1 plus a half, which is 3 over 2, S3 would be A1 plus A2 plus A3, which in our example turns out to be 7 over 4, if you add the first three terms together, and so on. If we have a sequence of partial sums, we can draw it on a diagram, in the same way that we draw any other sequence, using separate points to represent the individual terms. So the first term is 1, the second term is 1 plus a half, which is 3 over 2, the third term is 1 plus a half plus a quarter, which is 7 over 4, and so on. And if we draw a green line at the value of 2 on the vertical axis, you can see that the terms in our sequence of partial sums appear to approach a value of 2 as the sequence continues. And as we'll see on the next few slides, it's possible to prove that this sequence does converge to 2. But the question is, if we know that the sequence of partial sums for this series converges to 2, what does that tell us about the series itself? Well, here's the answer to that question. We say that our infinite series AN is convergent if the sequence of partial sums associated with the series is convergent, otherwise the series is divergent. So the sequence of partial sums is actually an essential concept for understanding the idea of convergent and divergent series, because we actually classify a series as convergent or divergent, depending on whether the sequence of partial sums is convergent or divergent. So the question is how can we prove that our series 1 plus a half plus a quarter etc is convergent? Well as we've seen, if we know that the sequence of partial sums is convergent, that means the series is convergent. So we could try to prove that the sequence of partial sums is convergent using the definition of a convergent sequence, in other words using the epsilon and n of epsilon notation that we saw when we were talking about limits of sequences. But in many examples involving series, you'll be glad to know that there are certain shortcuts we can use so that we don't actually have to write out formal proofs in order to determine whether or not a series is convergent. So it turns out that our series 1 plus a half plus a quarter etc is a geometric series, and this is a very special type of series where we have some constant multiplier which takes us from one term to the next term. So the general form of a geometric series is 1 plus r plus r squared etc, 
where r is the constant multiplier. Notice that you can write it with the index variable starting from a value of 0 or 1. It's exactly the same thing, provided that you adjust the power of r in the summation. And if you compare this to our example, you can see that in our case we have r equals a half, because as we mentioned before, every term in our series from the second term onwards is half of the term before it. A geometric series always converges to a limit of 1 over 1 minus r, provided that the modulus of r is smaller than 1. So given that we have a geometric series with a multiplier of r equals a half, we can work out that the limit of our series, which you can think of as being the total of all the terms in the series, even though we have infinitely many of them, is equal to 1 over 1 minus a half, which is 2. And of course we saw in the diagram earlier that the terms in our sequence of partial sums approached a limit of 2. Now there are several important methods of testing for convergence and divergence of a series that we need to be aware of, but first it's helpful to know some famous examples of convergent and divergent series, and the reason for this will become clear when we get on to looking at convergence tests a bit later on. So for now let's just have a look at some standard examples of convergent and divergent series, and these will turn out to be helpful later on. Our first example is the harmonic series, which goes 1 plus a half plus a third, etc. So obviously the terms in the series are getting smaller and smaller, but that isn't enough information to tell us whether or not the series is going to converge. So the question is, what do you think happens to this series? In other words, what is its long-term behaviour going to be? We're adding infinitely many terms together, but because the terms are getting smaller and smaller, we can ask ourselves, is it ever going to reach 10, for example? Is it ever going to reach 100? Is it ever going to reach 1000? And the answers to these questions are probably not obvious if you haven't seen this series before. So let's make it a multiple choice question. Which of these answers do you think is correct? Option A, the series converges to a limit, which we can calculate. Option B, the series converges to a limit, but it's impossible to work out what the limit is. And option C, the series doesn't converge to any finite value. So if you want to have a think about this question, you should pause the video now, otherwise we'll reveal the answer in a few seconds. So the answer is, option C is actually correct. The series does not converge. So what that means is that as you add more and more terms, even though the terms are getting smaller and smaller, the total of those terms will eventually go above 100, it will eventually go above 1000, and it will eventually go above any other positive value you can think of, no matter how large. And this means the series diverges to infinity. So here's a very useful general rule. If we have a series 1 over n to the power alpha, where alpha is some real number, it doesn't necessarily have to be an integer, the series converges if alpha is strictly greater than 1, and it diverges if alpha is less than or equal to 1. So this means if we have 1 over n squared or 1 over n cubed inside the summation, for example, in these cases the series will be convergent because the value of alpha is greater than 1. But on the other hand, if alpha is equal to 1, we have the harmonic series, which as we've just stated is divergent. So we didn't prove it was divergent, but that's something that you can look up if you want to be convinced.